And now, live and in charge. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're heck of a lot more ready than I am. <laughs> it's good to be back on our Tech Tuesday format before we actually start that officially. It is good to see you, though, buddy. Yeah, good um, to see you. I do want to say hi to Judy and Lloyd from Ottawa, Ontario. A surprise visit just recently. Also, Paul from Kansas, one of our past customers. It's good to see you guys in person. And Paul, thank you so much for your kindness and your gifts uh, to myself. Yes, and thank you, Paul, very much for the gift cards for Nate and I. We really do appreciate it. You know, you guys don't have to do that, but thank you very much. Did you actually give Nate his? <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Right. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll edit that part out, too. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, before we start officially Tech Tuesday, I just want to say happy birthday to my oldest son, Brandon, who's 27 today. You may have saw on my social media posts, and uh, Brandon and I have said the same thing. We're walking around Hocking Hills, Ohio, and it was hard to believe that this was Ohio. Hocking Hills, Ohio, and we just skimmed the surface at some of the great things that you can explore there. We did a lot of hiking uh, with Ryan, my daughter Nicole, and Brandon. Once again, happy birthday. Dad loves you. Been down to Hocking Hills? I'm yeah. sure you have. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's just amazing to me. It's and the beautiful pictures, down there. They don't do it justice. I mean, some of these rock cliffs are so big. Yes. You know, and I had to show a picture of Ryan and Nicole, and I said, "Hey, see those little people down there? That's where you were. This thing is just <laughs> massive. It's impressive." One more. I'm sorry. One more quick announcement before we start Tech Tuesday. I also put a post up on social media, and some of you kind of took it wrong. We're looking to have fun with you guys. I want to bring back the bit of Father Chuck. So give us not, a, not a, I still have the costume. Yeah. Give us a serious question that we'll come up with some kind of a smart ass answer uh, to make it fun for you in the Corvette confessional. I got all kinds of serious questions like we talk about here on Tech Tuesday. That wasn't what that post was for. Again, I'm trying to break it up, have fun. I'm going to bring back the nerdy news guy. We're going to have some characters to loosen it up to keep this as fun and as real as we possibly can can to get through all the drama that we're still going through yeah. with the C8 Corvette. Yeah. All right, so do we officially start now Tech Tuesday? Because we've got uh, we've got quite oh, a few... Whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa. Uh, Wait a minute. What's that? i got a few things to talk about. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, me too, but uh, where's okay. my intro? Okay. <laughs> see, I mean, what we, see what we started? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll go here. I'll get, I'll get your intro. Yeah, you do that. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so we got to get the intro. See? Okay. Star. The star at Tech Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> see what I got to deal with, guys? I'll find it. We'll find his intro. Got an idea where it's at. Anybody see Chuck's intro? <laughs> it's what I thought. <laughs> maybe it's in here? No. Not in there. Well, maybe it's up in there. No. Nope. You seen Chuck's intro anywhere? Chuck's intro? No. I yeah. Seen. Yeah, neither have I. Might be underneath here. Nope. Nope. Oh, maybe it's underneath here. Nope, it's not there. Oh, here it is. And now it's time for Tech Tuesday, featuring advice you want to hear from the man that has true passion for his job. Do you want it done right, or do you want it done right now? Other technicians can't wait to ask him a question. He's not your mom. He's the star of Tech Tuesday, Chuck Mads. Can we... Can we start now? Can we start now? I, I assume you found it. <laughs> yes, I yeah. found it. Now, now Tech Tuesday. All right, it is start. good to be back for Tech Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You got, uh, you got a little bit of a stack there. Yeah, uh, try to bit. answer these questions the best we can. Get to as many as we can each and every week. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate the support. And before you go tonight, we're going to help you show off your cars with a beautiful ride segment. So don't go anywhere. You want to start, bud? Yeah. Okay. This one comes from Mike. It says, hi, Rick. Been a fan of yours and Chuck since the reveal of the C8. Finally got my C8 from Morgan Crosby, deposit put down on September 2020, and delivered June 2022. Yeah. Yeah, I told you it's not over yet. Yeah, right? Wow. My dream car since I was a child and loving it. I have a question. I have a non-Z51 with performance exhaust, and yesterday was the first time I heard the air inlet behind the driver's door running after I turned the vehicle off. 
cool air was there so i figured the engine was not hot and it is cooling down now eventually turned off i was driving a bit aggressively in z mode but not nothing to exceed the extreme temperature outside which is approximately 80 degrees fahrenheit when should the fans come on and is this normal for the fans to run after the vehicle has been turned off yes what behind the the doors is for the transmission and the, the coolers not the the engine so it is very possible for them to run after the car shut off to cool oh, everything yeah. back down so. i've got a non-z51 a couple of times that ryan and i've been to the track well every time we've been to the track and we get off a session we get back into the parking lot they're yeah. sitting there they're running oh, yeah. uh we go screwing around down the street doing a couple hard accelerations come back and stop and they're running where you got to be concerned is if they're not running after you get done driving like that all right, thanks again for joining us, everybody. Tech Tuesday, we love hearing from you guys. We love the engagement, the interaction, and the opportunity to try and help any way we can. This is uh, from Andrew Kahn. He says, uh, so before I go to the dealership once again for these issues on my car, I wanna ask you and Chuck about filling up my car with gas. Every time I put gas in it, I fill it up, and then the reading on my dash down in the lower right-hand side, it's not the miles on the car, it's miles still empty. He says, it never says more than 320 miles, but when I first got the car, it was well over 400. Is anyone else seeing this? Yes, every time I fill up my car. In fact, when I go to pit race, and I don't know, when I'm gonna get back and, and share all that with you, but after each driving session, it resets itself. So if you're driving a lot, the same all the time, and it sounds like that you are, uh, when you fill up, it's gonna be basically what your last session of driving is gonna be. If you get done off a long trip, you're gonna notice when you fill up again, all of a sudden the miles are higher. You're doing a lot of city driving, I'm, I'm two miles from work, when I fill up mine, sometimes it just says 220 miles. When I got back from Pittsburgh last month, I filled it up and it said 420. So yes, you are gonna get some variance based on your recent driving style. Yeah. All right, this one comes from Dennis. It says, good morning, Rick and Chuck. Thanks for all you do with the channel. I've learned so much about the C8 since joining your channel. I've had a 2022 C8 hardtop convertible for two months with 3,700 miles on it. Always loved your mantra stop dreaming and start driving absolutely the problem i'm having is very early on the touchpad on the driver's door intermittently does not operate that in i have to open the window and enter from the inside button i've mm -hmm. also noticed that some of the electronic features on the car such as auto tilt side view mirrors fail to operate as well i took it to my local chevy dealer where they reset the BCM but failed to remedy any problems. They told me GM does not know the solution to this problem and suggest that I call GM. When I finally got the answer from GM, they told me the BCM needs replaced. Have you heard of this problem? Just wondering before I let these guys touch my car again with no success. You've had a similar problem like that. I've had one. I didn't have everything he's talking about. I did have one where the door wouldn't open and what I found was the push button had got stuck back in when you because when you push it it depresses and goes back in just a hair and it got stuck in what okay. snapped in all the way yeah but that's the only thing i've seen i mean if they've got an answer back from gm that the bcm needs replaced that's they probably what i would do yeah i know that i've seen a lot of problems with body control modules so right very You'll probably possible. start there what with changing the door switch though first well the, the touch that, that's just the, the only one i had i would look to see if the when he pushes it if it's staying depressed okay. if it's popping back out then it's a different problem than what i had Right, and this one comes from Tim Barker. He says, hey, Rick and Chuck, thanks for everything you guys do for the Corvette world. Uh, do you think that the factory tours will reopen anytime soon? I'm planning a trip to the Corvette Museum. In fact, yes, uh, we've talked about it a couple of times recently, but in case you missed it, I thought the Tech Tuesday was a good format to let everybody know, yes, in November, the public factory tours are back. That's gonna be a component too. If you do a museum delivery on your new Corvette, and that is gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a little weird though. I mean, these guys uh, probably have one of the best jobs in the country, the men and women at Bowling Green Assembly. But think about this. You're gonna go down there while they're working. When you go to a fast food restaurant, do you lean over the guy's shoulder when he's making your hamburger? <laughs> no, 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 put another piece of lettuce on there. No, 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 man. So remember, they're actually working while we're sitting there watching them. And it is a unique and a special opportunity certainly to do that. So yes, in November, those open up to the public. Thanks for watching the channel. Okay, sir. All right. This one comes from Scott. <laughs> Says, hello, Father Chuck. 
<laughs> this, have... is, this is not a Father Chuck segment, <laughs> right. but he's addressing you as Father Chuck. Yeah, correct. Right. He says, I have two tire questions. I have a 2019 Grand Sport. Would a non-run flat tire help avoid the cracking of the OEM wheels, sidewalls not being as stiff as hard? No. No. It would, unfortunately not. No, we see this 99.9% .9 of the time now that we're getting into the era that we're seeing the used Z06s for C7 and Grand Sport coming on trade. And there's not a one, if not all of them that are bent or cracked. Correct. You know, and the problem is sometimes, it, we've talked about it a lot in Tech Tuesdays, is you'll mistake a bent wheel for the transmission shutter. Or and, vice versa. Right, and it's only an automatic. So I had a guy with a stick shift. He says, oh, I got the shutter. I'm like, well, you don't have that because you have a manual transmission. Right. Yeah, that torque converter is only an automatic. So what happens is when you start to feel that wobble, you probably either have a bent rim or you can tell that you got a crack rim. I'm only losing about five pounds of air and I'll put it in the next morning. Oh, it's only about, it's just a small leak. Yeah, you got a small crack. Uh, the other part, where do you like the air pressure for the factory installed run flat tires? I have it where GM wants it, but would a higher pressure be better to lessen the sidewall from pounding the rim and the wheel and possibly cracking it? Uh, no, more pressure is gonna make it stiffer. Right. Um, I run them, I like to run them at what, what the factory calls for. Like I said, when they come in hot with an oil change, I usually put them up to 32 pounds because everybody knows as the tire gets warm, the air grows. So if the customer comes in off the street for an oil change with 27 pounds, I usually set them at 32. That way when they get back home and the tire cools back down, it should be close to 30. Yeah, because it says 30 on the door jam. It'll tell you what it has to be at cold pressure. And I noticed that even yeah. more so when we get, not so much now, we got a beautiful day here in Ohio, but when it gets cooler, you always do have a tendency when you're doing new car preps or customers services, you would put a couple of pounds in there just yep. because the cars at this time of the year in this part of the country have a tendency to sit just a little bit longer. Well, and you, you have the big cold swing. Like I said, I got up this morning and it was, you know, 48 degrees and well, this afternoon it's going to be 76. Well, the so. other day was 33. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, you, you that get big that. temperature swing creates that. Well, the other thing you can do too, is you can put nitro in your tires and that will lessen that expansion and contraction in there correct don't look at me with that tone <laughs> <laughs> that's between he and i and i'll tell you what it is because i said something about nitro and he goes oh yeah what? and he started making fun of me and i'm like no 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 and i'm like okay and i started talking about how the molecules are bigger and this and that i go hey, stop making me sound like a salesman <laughs> <laughs> you got one more there bro yes i got, I got one more ahead. this one comes from joseph it says i have had my new 2022 bed about five weeks and now I'm getting ready to install the Torx Red engine cover I bought almost two years ago. When I notice, it appears to me there's a threaded mounted bracket hole on the right side of the header cover. At first I thought it was that I'd lost a cap or a plug, but I called a friend who has a 2021 and his is also exposed. Is this a mounting bracket hole for a Z51 part or accessory? I'm surprised that Chevy would leave this exposed to accumulate dirt and junk. That's a good question, actually. We get that a lot, so yeah. thank you. Yeah, the, the very first one I seen, I'm like, uh, I had the same question, what are you missing? Then the second one, the third one, and every one that's come in, it has the same deal. Uh, the only thing I can figure is it's probably something for future use, and they're just putting it on there now. Yeah, future product that doesn't yeah. exist. I mean, just if you look in the back of your C8 coupe to the left-hand side, there's an embossed circle. Uh -huh. That's going to be cut out. Something's going to go there. I don't know what yet, but something's going to go there. So yeah. this is planned much further in the future than we all realize. Got one more here for you, and I think I'm still going to have time to jump into a car, and I want to do a uh, demonstration on the C7 exhaust that we had talked about a couple of weeks ago here on Tech Tuesday. This one uh, from Charlie L. 3LT dash delamination. What is the best prevention? We've talked about this a lot too, best repair. Actually, one of you guys, I don't know who it was, had an idea, I don't even know if it would work. He said, get a really skinny, when the, when the leather, because in 3LT, it's, it's very thin leather wrapped over the dash. A lot of heat, a lot of sun, and then that glue delaminates, and then you get these, these air bubble pockets on your dash, and it looks like hell. Somebody had said maybe get a uh, small hypodermic uh, needle in there and put a little bit of glue in there and kind of squeegee it around. I don't know. 
it shows so much. I mean, if you didn't lay it evenly, then you're gonna see the ripples of the glue. So yes, no, maybe so. As far as prevention, I actually tinted my windshield, but not that dark, and I don't think I did it enough. So I went out, I don't, don't even ask me where I got this, because I don't have a clue. I just ordered it online. One of those windshield shades, and this is, I like this because it has suction cups on the inside, and I like the silver because it is a great heat reflection. And I'm telling you what, those days that we had 90, 95 degrees here in Ohio, I get in the car, and you could feel it. It was 20 degrees or more cooler than what it had been had I not had this up in the windshield. So this would be my suggestion for prevention. You know, it has nothing to do with conditioning the leather or any of that kind of crap. It has to try to block the heat from being inside that car. And it's been this case since 2014 when we started with these beautiful, well, I apologize, go back to, um, go back to C6 when they had the 4LT. They had that dash, they had this problem. And even more so, it started popping off at C7 and a little bit of C8. It just depends, you know, if you're in a hotter climate, that's gonna be more of an issue. So something like this, I, you know, tint the window a little bit, but uh, I think, oh, the suction cup just stuck. <laughs> tint the window a little bit and then use this. And I think, um, I think that's gonna help you. I wish I would've used mine a lot sooner, but uh, that was my biggest fear in getting a 3LT. But I love the leather in the center of the steering wheel. And I love the other attributes that come with the 3LT package. So I'm glad I have it. It's the only way I would've got the tension blue interior, but um, that's a very good question and a concern going forward. Um, start as soon as you can to protect the heat from inside that. And what I think I'm gonna try and do is get one of those temperature readings. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do two different tests. Right now is not the time of the year to do that because it's starting to cool off, but I will do a temperature comparison test for you guys so you can see that this really is effective and might be a, a good subject to talk about in the future for sure. Well, and the ideal thing would be to get an infrared to hit the, the dash with the sun exposed. Oh yeah. And then with that covering the dash. Well, sometimes it's so hot, you touch it, it's real hot. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. Just like when we got off the track one time and I had all that stuff stuck to the tires and I thought I was gonna brush it off <laughs> with my hand. It's like, oh my God, I almost baked my hand. Uh -huh. It's like, whoa, wait a minute, no, don't do that. Oh yeah. All right, Chuck, you got any more? Uh, no, nope. I'm done. All right, let's do a hands-on demonstration. Let's hop in a C7 Corvette and show you how much easier it is to keep that performance exhaust open all the time as we talked about a couple of weeks ago in the C8 Corvette. Okay guys, we're inside a C7 Corvette and as a reminder, what we talked about before uh, just a couple of weeks ago here on Tech Tuesday, how do you keep your exhaust open on a C8 Corvette? It's a little more difficult, a little different than it has been over the past couple of generations. How you can keep the exhaust open. You hear that sound, but not do it by changing the steering feel, the suspension feel. Again, a link to that a couple of weeks ago is down below in the description. It's very easy to do on C7. Before I show you that, C6 folks, you remember you had performance exhaust, but the complaint was the exhaust only opens up when I'm accelerating around 3,200 or 3,300 RPMs. And as soon as you took your foot off the gas, the valves closed. It's like, hey, I want it open all the time. So what did you do? Again, this is the C7, but in C6, you could pull the fuse on the passenger floorboard. And you're like, okay, great. The exhaust is open all the time. But you're like, wait a minute. At 65, 70 miles an hour, it started vibrating and droning inside the car, but in C6, it wasn't designed to stay open at those speeds. So that's why they came up with a mild to wild switch. And then you could do that aftermarket thing. Some of the guys were pulling fuses on C7. I'm telling you, C7 is easy. If you have performance exhaust and you want it to be open, but you don't want it open in a tighter or stiffer suspension, do this. Go to your home screen here to settings. Go to driving mode and engine sound management. If you want it to be in the sport or track sound, and right now I'm in T for touring, just simply hit track and you can't hear it now inside the car, but it does open up right away. So you're overriding the mode selector by doing this here. You noticed up here it said auto mode selector. So that means it'll open up in sport and track modes. But if you say, no, I want to be in touring for the handling of the car, but I want the exhaust sound to be track, you simply do that. Rock and roll, bad. That's a great and easy way to do it on your C7 Corvette. Always fun showing you guys that stuff. Thanks again for the entries and the questions. And if you got a fun question that we can give you a fun answer, for Father Chuck. That's a bit. Go ahead and email that to me. Uh, I do appreciate that. Any closing comments to today? <laughs> Any closing comments today? But... No, I'm good. You guys have a great week and right. we'll see you next week. All right, fantastic. Thanks for watching. Support the channel. Subscribe, thumbs up the video, make comments down below in this particular video. Also look in the description. We'll have links to other videos and information that you may want to check out as well. And before you go, let's help you show off your great looking Corvettes. These are your beautiful rides.
And I didn't understand that 